transforming packaging into something useful for our junk journaling or art journaling efforts is what this video is going to focus on. I have this 96 count K-cup box that I will be cutting into usable sizes to form up a journal cover. And I am choosing to do a 10 inch by seven and a half inch journal. But I have a new technique that I want to share with you that I have done quite a bit of research on that I think will make a great cover. Peggy with Two Old Crows Mixed Media is my channel. I hope you will find my content valuable enough that you will hit that subscribe button and join me for future videos. Now that the box has been cut down into some manageable sizes with an X-Acto knife, I am taking it to my guillotine cutter to just sharpen up the edges so that each edge is um, very crisp and that both the front and the back cover are exactly the same size. Then I shall cut the spine at two and a half inches and we will have the foundation of the journal that we are getting ready to prepare the cover for. To build the spine, I'm going to make the first cut just to straighten that edge, and then I am measuring at one half inch and cutting once again, and the third cut will be for the length. This technique that is new to me is one where you utilize tempura paint and India ink. And the tempura paint acts as a resist for the India ink. I am sketching out a leaf design, and I'll do some mark making on this as well, that will be where the India ink will reside once the tempura paint is washed off. It'll make more sense when you see, when you see it progress here in the video. You can sketch anything you want, but be mindful that we'll be painting with a paintbrush all of the areas where the pencil is not. And if you recall, and I believe it was a couple of videos ago where I made that frame for this sister tag with the little tag game I'm playing with Kylie Koo and Sharon over at Texture Junkies, I etched a piece of copper with salt water. This is kind of similar, only with um, Tempura paint and India ink. In that particular video, which I'll, I'll link up above, I put a resist onto the copper to pull the copper away from the areas where that resist was not. In this specific instance, we are putting Tempura paint on to not allow the India ink to penetrate where the tempura paint is. And the pencil marks are our guideline on where we want to put that paint. Once all of the white paint is on, I will cover the entire thing in India ink. Now you see me dot the India ink there on the actual paper. And I am going to tell you now, don't do that. Dot it off to the side and dip your paintbrush in the India ink and come back to the paper. And I will show you why in a minute because I have chosen to keep the footage for the first one I did in because it also shows some of the mistakes that I made with the first one that I think I can prevent you or help you from, from making. So let's get this covered 100% black and now we'll head off to the sink to wash off this India ink. I have turned on just a cool stream of water, lightly getting the paper damp and rubbing gently with my fingers. Now, there's two things that I want to mention here. This is the first one that I did. In this particular version, I allowed that ink to completely dry and actually hit it with my blow dryer and secured that drying with that hot air. Not a good idea because it did not rub off as easily as the second one that I did where I didn't allow it to dry completely and I did not further dry it by hitting it with the hot air gun. So 
As I told you in the very beginning, this is the very first time for me with this technique, so I am learning by my mistakes, and I wanted to keep my mistakes in so you could see them as well. You'll also see on this particular one the little dots that are just so firmly grounded on there that I didn't get them off completely. And I just ran my finger across them there. That's where I dotted that ink on the paper. So that is why I suggested that you dot, put the ink off to the side and then paint your paper. So let's take a look at the second one I did. See how much cleaner this one came out? This was the one that I did not put that dye, that did not dye, well, if I can talk, did not allow the India ink to dry completely. I just let it get kind of dry to room temperature or so that it wasn't sliding off the page. I got the page dark, walked immediately over to my sink and began to go with the uh, tempura paint removal. What I'm doing now is taking the India ink and any place that I have that pencil mark that I had the paint accidentally covering, I'm just lining those in with that. And I'm going to do that on the leaf stem, some of the veins of the leaves, and I'll also do it on some of the circles. So I think this kind of works out kind of cool. It is a very, um, I, I think, you can sketch something and it looks nice, but when you sketch something and do that ink resist on it, or the ink with the resist on it, it has that um, more grungy, more arty look to me. I think it just looks a lot better. I want to finish this up by adding some additional color to this. I've inked around the outside edge to kind of frame it in. And now I'm coming back with a transparent yellow iron oxide. You can see in that first one and you can kind of see the two side by side. But what I'm using is a golden transparent yellow iron oxide high flow acrylic paint and I'm watering that down and just brushing it over the entire piece. I had a little black on my paintbrush so <laughs> I'm going to start over so I wasted a little bit of paint there. But I think this adds some distinct color to it. And I think the, the India ink shows through this transparent uh, high flow acrylic nicely. And I think this will create a nice cover for our journal. But I want to cover the front cover and the back cover of the journal. And I'm choosing to do that with a rice paper. So I have coated my gel press with yellow ochre and we'll do just a yellow ochre background. So I'm trying to create a cover that that piece that we just created for our focal point on the cover will look attractive on top. And I just want to get some of this color on the outside edges so I don't get it all over myself. So there is our first pull of just the yellow ochre background. So I have a couple that I've pulled now. We'll just pull one more. And again, I'm just using rice paper. And the reason that I like to use the rice paper is it's thin enough that it folds real easily around my corners. And it does create a very nice cover. So there we go. So now we have three that we have coated with the yellow ochre.
And I'm sticking with two colors, the yellow ochre and the black, which I think on our cover piece we have that um, yellow iron oxide in black. And I'm kind of liking my little roll-off sheets. I think I might um, photograph those and digitize them and maybe use them in collage. So in our theme of packaging, I'm using nothing but packaging to create the designs on this paper. So I've utilized a can to create the circles and I am utilizing this very large bubble wrap that was actually in that same iPad packaging that I used. I have a piece of cardboard that I am utilizing on here as well. So let's just take a look and see what kind of imprint we get using those three forms of packaging as our tools on our gel press. So I think those turned out nice. And let's get the ghost print off of those as well. And there, I'm pretty happy with the way those turned out. And I'm gonna go for a third time. It seemed like we were getting quite a bit off the second. Now I'll use my little mop-up sheet over here to get some as well. That one didn't pull nearly as much, but I think it's workable. We can, we can work with that with just a little bit more black paint. And we'll pull some of our packaging mark making tools. This was part of a potato bag and they had, uh, this is plastic, and they had the little, um, air holes cut in that potato bag. That's to let the air into the potatoes so they don't begin to grow, I guess. And there you go, how that turned out on that one. And I think that's kind of interesting myself. So we have that. And let's just kind of clean this plate off and see if we get anything else that might be use, usable in the creation of this journal. So now that I have that done, this yellow iron oxide on the front cover is so much lighter than that yellow ochre that I want to introduce some yellow ochre into this cover piece, focal piece. So I have the piece of cardboard and I'm just dipping the cardboard in the yellow ochre and making some marks with it on, on this watercolor paper. And I think that will pull this piece into my cover a little bit better. I also have a lid from one of my vitamin gummies that I take every day. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we'll just make some circles here, go around a couple of the circles that I had drawn with the India ink or with the pencil and had the resist of the India ink. And now I think that could look quite nice on that as background. You see how that yellow ochre kind of pulls in. So we have the yellow ochre and black on the focal piece and black and yellow ochre as our background. I've taken those um, sheets or those prints of the watercolor paper, of, of the watercolor paper, I'm sorry, of the um, rice paper and I utilized Yes Paste and just coated my box or coated my packaging with the Yes Paste. And I'll glue the rice paper on to the piece of packaging. I'm gonna cut the corners to give me a good fold. And this rice paper is thin enough that I can just fold this in like I was wrapping a gift. I'm gonna put some 
paste, yes paste, on the other side up around the edges so I have something to adhere the paper to when I fold it over. And there we go. And the last little bit. And then when I flip this over, there you have the front cover or the back cover, whichever we choose to use it for. And I'm very happy with how that turned out. Now I had a little white spot there and I dotted some black ink on it and got a little too much on so now we're just going to spread that out. I was a little happier with it before I did that but we'll use this as the front cover and put the focal point over it and this will not matter anymore so let me just give it a little more black. We'll put the cardboard on there and give it a little definition. Maybe dot some of the yellow ochre over the top of it. And as I said before, I'm keeping all of the mistakes in. Now, I could have just discarded this and started over, but I thought it might be more interesting to just fix it. So now I am going to adhere this focal point and I think because this watercolor paper covers the majority of this front cover that that little mistake that I made is not going to matter. So let me get that Yes Paste out again and we will continue forward. I've turned this over. And once again, I think I'll go along the back of this to make sure that we have a good, strong connection between our focal point and our front cover. And this watercolor paper is kind of buckling a little bit on me because of the moisture that was in it. So we may need to put some weight on it for a moment. Just putting a piece of deli paper over the top and taking my baron to make sure that it is connected everywhere possible and just giving it a good firm press. And that seems to have gotten everything into position. Now, I didn't center this because I know I'm going to have the spine and I'm going to have the book binding tape that is going to come up slightly over the edge. So I kind of want to keep in mind that I need a little extra room on your left or the left side of this when I put this focal point on. Now I want to put some brads through each of the four, each of the corners. So we have four brads and we'll put one in each of the corners of this piece. and get those opened up on the back. And I want to do this before I put my cover on the other side so that we can go over the top of the opening of those brads or where those brads are splayed out on the back. I'm poking the hole just with my craft pick and just eyeballing where I'm putting it. I'm not doing any distinctive measuring to get the exact position on each one. And now I would call this finished 
as as far as the front cover goes. I don't think that I will add anything else onto that. I like the simplicity of the cover, and I am not going to add any closure other than the book will just close flat. I'm thinking of putting in just a um, bunch of watercolor paper inside this on a string binding so that you can pull it in and out, maybe pull it out, work on it, and then stick it back in for storage. So I'm not thinking of doing this as a junk journal. I'm thinking of it more as a small art journal to hold some specific pieces that have been done on watercolor paper, if you will, as I'm thinking it through. It's my final cup of coffee for the day. That's, that's a lie. That's not true. I'll have more. I have decided to make the inside of this book very simple and I am going to cover the inside front cover and the inside back cover with book pages. So I will glue a few of those down and then we will continue with putting the, the cover onto the spine and get everything together. I'm using a piece of athletic tape. I haven't decorated the spine as yet. And I put the athletic tape down on one side of my spine and then laid my cover over the top of that. And I will do that once again. I'll just overlap that athletic tape, cut it off there to the edge of the spine. And now I can grab that other cover. Let me just get that trimmed off so that it's trimmed right to the edge of that spine. I may need to use my X-Acto knife. So let me grab that real quick. And there we go. So now we have that nice and neat. And we'll take the back cover and just position it so that we have just a little gap between the spine and the covers. And now we have the book constructed. So this is the athletic tape on the inside. And on the back, I didn't decorate the spine because I'm going to cover it with the book binding tape. How do you think the cover looks? I'm grabbing the book binding tape now. And I have a black book binding tape. And you can use duct tape, you can use lace, you can use whatever you choose. I purchased this book binding tape and I'm very fond of it. If you like it and like the way it looks, there's a link to it on my Amazon page. And of course, I do make a slight commission on that when you buy there, but it does not affect your price. But that book binding tape I find is, is very nice. And I think it's, it kind of gives a classy look to the journal that we have just made out of packaging and decorated with packaging. So I'll fold that over so that is covered and then I will come back in with something to cover the inside of that here in a second. But that is the basic construction of our book and I do want to put that black book binding tape down the center too but this athletic tape is a little wider than the book binding tape as you can see there's a, just a little bit of white overlap to that on the inside so to cover that, I am going to choose some cheesecloth. And I'll grab the cheesecloth, and we'll come back and cut two strips of that and put that up the sides. Now, I could use a new pair of scissors. I have to admit that most of my scissors now are laden with glue and they are not cutting fabric very well. So I apologize for that fumbling with those scissors to get this cheesecloth cut, but I have cut it into two thin strips 
and I'm utilizing glitter glue to just glue it down here on the edges and I'll let that glue set up and dry a little bit and then I will come back with that black book binding tape and we'll go right up the center of the two strips with that black book binding tape. There's my line of glue, the second piece of the cheesecloth. And now we'll glue that. So I guess I kind of fibbed. I didn't let it dry real well, did I? And what my intentions are and what I plan to do, and I am letting it dry before I do this. As a matter of fact, I haven't done it yet. But I will come back in and fray that cheesecloth along those edges. So it's just a frayed cheesecloth there. And I think that will look very nice once we get our um, insertion into the book, which we will do next week at the beginning of our packaging. I'll show you how I finish this out. Um, I haven't made a firm decision. I'm thinking of it being an art journal book with just, like I said before, with just watercolor sheets in there. But this is the finish of the cover. And I'm happy with how it looked. I'm anxious to hear what you think. And if you've done this technique before, I know that um, resist is, is popular and different things for resist are being used over in my Facebook group. This just happened to come up in my newsfeed and I thought it was very cool and did some research on it and I'm very fond with the outcome. So I hope you are as well. If you like my content, please follow us with the coffee cup prompts. I've put the playlist right here. I shall say bye for now. See you soon or see you in the next video.